Hello pets, welcome back to Hard Space Shipbreaker. Today we're going to be looking at how to handle single hull ships that have tricky engineering. So you're trying to pull the engines out, but you also need to pull the core. And you don't want to detonate any of it. The Merkel is a single hull. So because it's got a single hull, it has some interesting pressurization issues. If you notice, the ship is completely pressurized. However, if you are efficient, you can use this to your advantage. You, enter, you can enter the ship normally, and then you can look at the ship. So you've got these twin side engines, so it's got four side engines, and it's got one rear thruster. This is your rear end. These side engines will be independently mounted, and then that rear thruster will have an interesting mounting bracket. Now, all the more clothes are designed the same, so it's not that big of a deal. You can use this method to break down the back end of the ship with any of the models. Pressure level you just have to remember that there's a few catches to this. First, this is a horrible ship for it. They have all of this, all of this cargo that is loose. You can't have that. But if you notice, the side cabins are also fully pressurized, or fully linked. So if we can depressurize the central cabin safely, we can detach this whole ship without any issues. So let's see if we can find that pressure terminal. Go to systems. Uh, there's the one in the cockpit. Who needs that one? Oh, there it is. It is above the airlock. You notice this one's been damaged. This is not a good thing. That means we can't use this to safely depressurize this cargo bay. So in order to make sure that we can actually safely not have debris move around, but break down the cargo bay, get all the all the loose debris, and we're gonna put it all in the cockpit. This will reduce the chance of damage when we have to do an explosive decompression. Now, you can, if you're so inclined and have access to these side passages, which you can do, you can cut here and here to get into that one. And this one here is already open. And you can pull the fuel lines. So, in this case, we are going to pull the fuel lines because we have access to this one. And we're gonna pull this one. I believe I can pull these out here. And pull out here. And pull that out. So now I have more, one, another loose piece of debris that I need to get around. It's not a big deal. But keep in mind, that by doing this, I don't have loose fuel tanks. And you don't want to have loose anything when you go to deep plus. Now in the smaller models, this isn't a big deal because your fuel lines are usually not an issue. There we go. Because they're usually only attached to the engine in the back, and they're not attached to the side. Come on. Get in there. Oh, come on. You can fit. I know you can. Yeah, you 
damn. Yeah, luck for you. This has no way of going anywhere other than in the water. That's beautiful. This is gonna be a little lie. So that was bad. Well, let me get this fuel thing out of the way. Dealing with loose fuel tanks is always a challenge because they're highly, they're easily damaged and they have unique issues. So, I'm going to take this out here. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Get this out of the way. So you can get all that debris out of the out of the cargo hold this way. Yeah, yeah, we don't care. Okay, we gotta go. Just get out of the way. Airlock pressure levels increasing. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're going to get that other fuel tank that's now loose and grab that and get that out of the way. The last thing you want to do is have anything loose be near the core. There are ships that are larger that have even more problems than this. But the solution is pretty much the same. We don't have access to oh, a safe way of depressurizing it. So you do that. Your lock yeah. pressure levels dropping. I mentioned I was gonna deal with this a specific way. I'm going to do with this by depressurizing the bag. And it raises the button. Now, that particular method of depressurization threw out all of the components that were going to be loose. them out and put them into the net. By doing that, you have the ability of if something goes the wrong direction, like say this item here is a furnace item, you can redirect it to the furnace without any issues. However, this particular method works on any ship. If you're in a, well, in a ship that does not have as much debris in the cargo bag, or as much fuel lines in the back, and we'll look at another ship in a minute, and I'll show you a different method. There's another method of doing it. So, not to make a deal, and then just pull your core down. Make sure to give them a good heave out and always tie a line. Because if you let it drift, it doesn't always make it, and it can blow up. Find it. From this point, this ship is considered safe. Okay, so we are now in a Merkel Station hopper. There's a few issues with this one. First, the station hopper has 
um, positive things. It's got less to deal with. What you can do on any Marco craft is take out these four bulkheads that, would, that you use to take off the back end. If you take them out, and we're going to position ourselves here, Z up. in there so they don't blow out back here and this decompressed all over a hunk of ice you can do this in any mod it doesn't matter what, what's the setup you just don't have the debris flying into the back end here in this case the core is on the side over here which is good in other cases it still might be in the back depending on the layout but by doing that you can decompress the whole back end safely without having any issues with it you also have the ability to access the whole ship but it is fully decompressed so the only thing you have to do now is move this out of the way and in this case you see i have the whole front end decompressed as the drawer is open you don't need to worry about it there's not enough pressure as long as there's not a lot of loose debris that will fit through this door to do damage. Now, if there's a lot of, if there's a lot of debris that would go through the door and do damage, then it doesn't do any good. But from here, it's just an easy catch of coming down the line. You just kill the fuel line so you can't accidentally start a fire while you're trying to break out your engine. Do a cut there. Let's do a kind of an angle cut here. Do a cut there. And then, you just have to release this wall. So, you just have to, I believe it's, just take these out. Take that out. Take that out, and I believe that's the key of the wall. There she goes. So now it's easier if you take out the whole wall. I'll show you the other side. As an example, stick out the wall, and then all you have to do is back up a little bit, take out this section here, and tie it on, and there it goes. Easy peasy. But now, if you want to do this the other way, I'll show you on this wall over here so you can see the other method of doing this. As before, you come over here, you take out the fuel line, not a big deal, you have to be careful with this fuel tank, you can get it out without having to cut that line, so not always, you just have to be careful if you're going to cut, you're gonna cut that line. So you don't accidentally burn your fuel tank. But that's something you kind of learn how to do as you go. Come on. Chairman. This one's just being a little bit of a pass, isn't it? Come on, turn. 
There we go. And my lap thing here. Thank you. Alright, so. We'll get rid of the fuel line. No big deal. Now, what you'll do is you'll cut all your lines here. You'll take out your engines. You'll tether your engines to wherever you're sending them. So if you're actually doing normal salvage, you'll tether your engines down here. Salvage your engines normally, and then you just have to go down here at the bottom and slide on past the reactor here. So you have this radiation unit down here. You just have to cut out all these tethers. It takes a little bit to do because you have. Um, several to take care of and they're kind of hard to see and that's the last of them let me go above it and this would be the same as if you had the engine in there as well now the big problem we have here is the airlock I get this last two tethers out of the way. The airlock should get up to us. Here we go. That takes care of the airlock. And. Alright, so this is the whole science for you now. Because you can just kind of skip in here. If you're careful. And then, what you would normally do is you just take a couple of others. And if you got it right, you just peel the whole wall off. And that works with any method. Take another. Drop the lock. We're assuming that this was the, the engine, the reactor, and then you just, no big deal, you just pull the reactor out, assume it's the reactor, so you just pull the reactor out, and tether it to the ground, and just out of the way, it's relatively easy to do. So that is how you, two different ways of taking this ship apart, so that you can actually uh, deal with a couple of different configurations and be effective at it. So have a good day, shipbreakers, and uh, safe cutting.